Hello and welcome to the show. Today on IWC TV Now, we'll be looking at the brand new and highly anticipated Asda that's being built along St George's Way in Newport. We will also be looking at the football club in Newport that's being forced to move its grounds. But first, let's get the facts and figures from Matt Keane on the new supermarket that's being built. Asda, one of the leading supermarkets in the UK, is finally coming to the Isle of Wight after being talked about for many years. In 2010, it was announced that the supermarket would open in 2012. However, things didn't go quite to plan. Planning permission stopped the development of the store and delayed any progress. Developers have now paid the Isle of Wight Council £17.5 million for the land that they are wanting to build on. With this money, the council are planning on buying more equipment for leisure centres and upgrading facilities at the county hall. As you can now see, the development is currently going on. The store will be 45,000 square feet long. It will contain 400 parking spaces, a petrol station which would offer the cheapest fuel on the island. The cafe will provide a cheap place for families to eat at. And furthermore, there will be an easy to access pedestrian walkway to Asda. The company expects to create up to 450 jobs at the new store and has also pledged to enter a local employment partnership working alongside Job Centre Plus to recruit staff. So how will the new store affect the island and how will it affect it financially? My name is Matt Keane, back to the studio. I'm joined in the studio by Judy Jones Evans, a councillor of Newport Central, and Phil Truckle, a business and administration teacher at the Isle of Wight College. Hello, guys. Thank Hello. you for joining us. Thank you for asking me. Uh, first of all, the first question what effects would the opening of Asta have on other small independent businesses that make their living of people shopping in uh, Newport? Um, I've actually got a, a business in the centre of Newport, an old family business, so you know my sort of roots go back uh, many, many years in, in the town centre. And for me, um, the, the Wild of White Council allowing the uh, ASDA to be on the outside of town has, has really got some huge ramifications for, for our, our town centre viability. Um, because you, you get what we call link trips where people might pop into Marks and Spencers but then they'll go, they'll go through town, park yeah. there for a couple of hours. So I think having it outside of town, um, the, the, the ability for link trips is going to be um, greatly diminished, even though they are putting on buses and they say you can walk that far. Yeah. But we know in reality people just like to make things easy. So I am concerned. I did fight this, this Asda development um, you know, through my... Newport Business Association and because I'm the chairman of the Federation of Small Businesses as well on the Isle of Wight so small businesses really sort of in my blood and big yeah. big old supermarkets especially where the money <laughs> will be you know eventually going uh, to America um, doesn't really follow through with my idea of a circular economy where we should keep money circulating locally. Yeah, Phil do you have an opinion on this? Yeah I, I totally agree but it is whether it's a, a negative or positive impact is almost neither here nor there. I think we get what we deserve as a society. I mean, uh, the supermarket's based on supply and demand. We demand goods, free parking, goods that are reduced price, and you know it's going to end up with um, automated tills, people out of work, dead town centres, and uh, no economy. But by that time, we'll think, oh, is that the consequence of um, pursuing cheap goods? Um, yeah. But I do believe we've got to relook at what town centres are. I don't think they'll be, they, they need to become more social hubs rather than um, retail outlets. Yeah. Mm, absolutely. It's that experience that people want in tourism. It's all about the experience, and that starts from the moment, you know, for the Isle of Wight, the moment before you, you know, you get on the ferry, it started. So yeah. it's really about, you know, that, so, that social engagement, you know, our, making our spaces a place where you want to be and congregate and... Uh, you know, and learn as well, I think, you know, there's, it's yeah. a big, big advantage. And I think we're having our, we've obviously got the college here, we've got um, Nose Hill Sixth Form, which is doing some great links with universities. So for me, I'd like to see bringing more young people in town, have a campus, have some accommodation so we can get mainland yeah. um, uh, and overseas students and, you know, revitalise our town. That's what we need. We need young people, we need vibrancy. Okay, so do you think that the ASDA, uh, Phil, would improve the economy of the island and in that place increase um, employment levels? Uh, <laughs> I think, it, it, no, 
<laughs> no. <laughs> the, 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 yes, all the supermarkets increase employment levels, but we've got too many people on part-time jobs who want full-time jobs. Yeah. So we've got a whole group of people who are unable to enter the housing ladder mm -hmm. or really contribute positively to the economy. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a forced economy. So we, we've got uh, lots of part-time jobs and you know, we, we can complain all you like, but we're still going to go to the supermarkets, park up and demand our goods and ignore the local shopkeepers. Do you think the council could do anything about that? I think the council can't do enough by itself. It, it, would, it would be national government that need to do things as well. Um, yeah. We can play around with planning. You can also play around with congestion charges. There's many things you can do, but the, the thing for me, uh, I would reduce business rates in the towns. The council can't afford to do that because yeah. they need to get an income, and yet we do need to reduce business rates to let small entrepreneurs set up little businesses and thrive in town. So it's just a cycle. Yeah, the other thing I'd do personally, which might be contentious, uh, if I were chance of the exchequer, I would put a lot of tax on off sales of alcohol to make it cheaper to go out and have a conversation in a pub and a cafe and a bar than it is to go to a supermarket and get beer and take it home. There's many things you can do, but it takes a, a pretty visionary uh, government to start yeah. shaking things up a bit. Julie, do you think an is actually necessary for an island that has 150,000 people as its population? Um, I don't think so, no. I think maybe for, for Asda it's more about putting a marker down. We have got an, an Asda yeah. on the Isle of Wight. You know, the, the, nas the national trend is away from these large supermarkets. People just aren't building them anymore. They're going for the small local model, the, the Tesco's Express and the, uh, the, the Sainsbury's local. Yeah. Um, and e even our, the, our, our little spa shops, um, you know, in town, you know, sorry, on the island, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're doing quite well. The corner shops, convenience. We don't do the big shops much now. And of course, the rise of Aldi and Lidl. Now, um, Aldi are uh, building, looking to build one out East Cows, looking yeah. to come to Newport. Now, they only need 20,000 people to sustain each store. So, if you so you can do a quick count up, um, you've got four, you've got 80,000 people already sustaining four of them. They're looking to have another two. That's 100, that's 120, almost getting to our population of the yeah. island. Um, I don't think it's necessary, and I think the council actually caused themselves a bit of a headache because you know, say so they, they shifted the, the emphasis uh, to the outside of town, causing a problem where that was employment land. Now, if you want to get people getting to ha having um, uh, mortgages and getting on the housing ladder, you need to have some man manufacturing, which is more productive. And then retail can follow on from there in the service industries, but you've got to have the industries first yeah. to then support the demand. And um, there is a price for, for cheap food and produce, I'm afraid, and we, we may not be around to see it, but it's going to be, you know, chickens be coming home to roost. Phil, do you think that uh, with this big asset that sells practically everything, do you think that's going to kind of make the high street die down a bit? Yeah, but by very nature. I mean, if you look at the models, um, who's stopping them opening up a barbers, a dry cleaners? Um, they can do everything yeah. at these supermarkets. And we as a society will go along, flock to it and use it. And then we'll complain about the loss of the high street. At some point, we've got to intervene and say, do we want this? And at the moment, people don't equate their actions with the consequence. Mm -hmm. So we, they don't equate, you know, the people who queue up at the self-service checkouts don't realise they're putting people out of work. If people are out of work, they've got less tax to pay, there's less tax being paid, there's less money in the local economy, less people buying in shops. So, so at some point, society's got to tie these things up. Yeah. Um, it, yes, it has a consequence, and uh, as Julie said, you know, we might not be around long enough to see when this implodes, but it will implode. Yeah. I, th I think there is a trend, though, to more artisan-style small small businesses. Like got the Island Bakers doing really well in Node Hill now, and yeah. they're thriving. You can't get a seat in there yeah. hardly. So um, and Cafe Azola. So there are small businesses that are making the, uh, an impact across the island, especially in the food and drink sector. So I don't think it's all doom and gloom. I think the Isle of Wight has got such a strong independent um, economy. And I think there's, because like um, across, well in America especially, it's going that way with these small sort of artisan businesses. I think we can sort of almost catch, catch the common coattails. We haven't lost yeah. it enough yet. We haven't, we're not totally like anywhere town, which I used to call it with all the whole high street, you know, mm. full of uh, all these chain stores. 
but of course that could be damaging. You know, look what happened when Woolworths went, you know, and yeah. LBHS. But I think, I think you're right. We need to focus on that. And the way to focus on it is support those businesses. Yeah. So in your role, perhaps you can reduce the business taxes. <laughs> right, with the construction of the new superstore, it wouldn't be possible without causing a disruption uh, to the surrounding areas and a local community. Newport Football Club have been forced to move their stadium. Let's see how this has affected the team. The home of Newport Football Club to get more details. The club was formed in 1888 and in 1898 became founder members of the Isle of Wight League. Later the club went on to win the league championship four times before joining the Hampshire League in 1927. In 1988, chairman of Fulham Football Club Jimmy Hill opened St George's Park. Due to financial struggles in December of the 2003-2004 season, the club was placed into administration. Following this event, in 2008 the Supporters Trust gained ownership. After finishing bottom of the Division 1 South and West of the Southern League, the club was relegated back to the Wessex League at the end of the 2008 season. The use of the grounds itself isn't limited for just the team and staff. The first floor bar can be hired out for use from the local community. This is not just about 22 players that go out on a pitch on a Saturday afternoon. This is a community hub and we cater for almost up to 40 charities here. We have about 2,000 people through our door every single month. On the 23rd of November 2016, the county press reported on the story of the Newport Football Club receiving a notice to leave St George's Park. In a letter to the chairman of the club, Stuart Ross, it was reported that the South Coast Leisure said it had reluctantly decided to give the club notice to leave their home ground. Also in the letter, there was a proposal from the SLC which stated that they had an alternative site in Newport for the club which would allow for large improvements towards both the club and the community. Now there was um, a location given as they want to relocate us, but actually um, it's not, it doesn't provide Newport Football Club with a future. It doesn't provide Newport Football Club with a sustainable and viable business and able to create revenue to be able to then feed that back into the football and ultimately that's what you always want to do. So will the move of the Newport Football Club have a negative impact on the community and team? Or will it provide a better experience for everyone? My name is Matthew Keane, back to the studio. So do you think that, uh, how do you think that the football club moving will affect the community of the club? I, d I don't know enough about the sort of crowds they get. Um, all I can look back is at history. Um, I can look at Ride Sports when it moved out to Smallbrook and that was the beginning of the end and there were some oh, accusations yeah. of poor management. Um, I remember Newport Football Club being in Church Lit, you know, when they got big crowds and of mm. course um, once you go out of town, they're already out of town. So you've already got that, do you have to have a car to get there? People, do they walk there? It's not an easy yeah. place to walk and this is a bit further. It will have an impact. Um, but it's all about money, isn't it? And that's sad. I'd like to have seen the football ground stay in the town where people just go and have a beer, go and watch the football. You walk along there, but you know, the price of land is so much these days that uh, how can they refuse? Yeah, and, I can do that. But I think Judy's probably got more on it about the consequence of this again. You know, that it's like, yes, you take the money, but where does that take you? Of course, it's all about supermarkets again because we lost Church Lytton when the Marks and Spencers wanted to move to town. And, and you know, you're right, you had that vibrancy back then, didn't you? We used to go as families to watch yeah. the football, and then the, the town would be just buzzing afterwards. So, you know, move just moving just, you know, what, half a mile away, I think, has an impact on that link between the, the, the local community and, and, yeah. and the football club. So, going somewhere else which let's face it's not going to be in the centre of town is it it's going to be again on a sort of a on the periphery somewhere um there's various various sort of rumours going round um from new close uh, up to the, the county ground has been mooted as well i think they're going to go temporarily going to go to yeah. um, east cows um, vicks aren't they because they have to be enrolled on otherwise they'll lose their league place won't have to start all over again so yeah. at least that that's sort of secure their place in in the league um but yeah, it's heartbreaking. I mean, we've got we've got Ride Rugby Club. Uh, they they play at um, in Newport now. Yeah. So you know, you, I think it, that 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 link between you know where you are, where you represent, is really really important. 
Do you not think that, because they've been offered um, a better facilities film, um, do you not think that they could use that, these, these facilities that they've been offered? I, d uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, all I know is there's a lot of passionate people involved with Newport Football Club and they deserve a good survival. I just got this feeling there's something else going on behind the scenes, some shenanigans yeah. about you know where we're going to end up. I might be wrong. It might be complete disarray. Um, but if they can at least survive by playing at East Cows, then perhaps it'll pan out and we'll see what happens. But it, it's sad when we get to the stage you have to drive to go and see a football match. What do you mean as in like behind the curtains? Do you I, think? Well, I don't know because it's something I don't know about. Yeah, I, I, I get the, there's so many rumours going yeah. around and so many suggestions that you think, is there, are there, or are there deals being done or is there some ignorance or how much money's involved. Yeah, it goes back to money, doesn't it? Yeah, always, always, yeah. And of course, it's on the supermarket, on the cars, on the, their site as well. That's where Audi or there's some retail park want to go. So yeah. if the council hadn't given up this, this employment land with the, with the football club there for Asda in the first place, for the, you know, the, the handsome price tag they got for it, um, then we wouldn't be in this situation at this, t at this moment in time anyway. No, I mean, uh, as a are the right person when you start seeing two different planning permissions going in for the same site of the east you think can't people talk to each other and sort this out yeah it's all about money though do you think they could use the money then do you think that'd be useful to them all this finance what the council no the the football club, football club. um yes if it's invested wisely mm. um it, there's got to be something that's sustainable that's what concerns me I, I, you know, I'm sure they will consider it carefully, but yeah. if they can invest in a sustainable model, then good. Is it time perhaps we had an Isle of Wight football club and that combined our resources and had a fantastic, you know, fantastic facility? You know, that's controversial, but, you know, sometimes to be sustainable, you need to join forces. It, it's always been the case that if you put the best together, you could probably get into the, into the football league. Yeah. It's personalities that often stop it happening. That's so. right, yeah, yeah. How do you think people react when they hear that the club is uh, being moved to South Coast Leisure? I think they're sad. I, I'm, I'm all for community ownership of football clubs in, in, all, in all forms, on all levels, so I don't know what it means, but um, to me as someone, again, I start to think, really? South Coast, who are they? What are they doing? Um, why are they involved in it? And they might be good yeah. people, they might be doing good stuff, mm -hmm. but I don't know enough about that. Mm. So. I mean, the player-wise, do you think the players will be able to get to there? I mean, it's going to affect them, doesn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, this shouldn't really make any difference to, to that side of things, really, because uh, um, we've got people going off, off to the mainland every week to play, yeah. whether they're playing for football, uh, mm. for Newport, East Cows, Braiding, Cows and we've got people playing for teams over there and people coming over here to play for our local team. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that matters so much. It's for the, the it's like you said, the, the, the days of the family, just going to a football match. Uh, it's more of a commitment if you can't mm -hmm. just walk there, whether there be a bus route. And of course, we've got problems with buses. We're not, we haven't got competition, so there's a cost to the buses. So mm -hmm. it's not going to be an easy thing for the family just to say, hey, let's go watch football. It's a nice day. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. And we've had a great range of views here from our guests. Thank you very much for joining us. It was a Thank pleasure you. having you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and join us next week where our team will be looking at the subject of cyberbullying and the availability of careers for young people on the island. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>